It's time now for French Connections, our weekly look at the intricacies of life here in France with our very own Florence Villemanel. Hi, Hi Flo. Judy. This week, we're going to focus on contraception and abortion rights. We've already covered this topic before on the show, but given how these issues have been in the spotlight recently, especially internationally, it's, it's good to remind people about what things are like here in France, where there have also been some recent developments. There have. Let's start with a contraception, which has been legal in France since 1967. And like in other countries, the legalization of contraception, and in particular the birth control pill, sparked major societal change, to say the least. Today, the pill is still the number one method of contraception used by French women. And recently, the government decided to make contraception completely free for women under the age of 26, and access to emergency contraception, which is commonly called the morning after pill, also just got a lot easier. Formerly, it used to be free for minors, and now it's free for all women who say it's about time. On a le droit de choisir sans avoir la vie de quelqu'un d'autre, tout simplement. Forcément, c'était très important pour les jeunes, mais euh, toutes les femmes peuvent en avoir besoin. Et il euh, y a aussi des femmes plus vieilles qui sont dans la précarité, donc je pense que c'est une bonne chose. Ça nous permet d'être plus libres et de pouvoir euh, effectivement euh, prendre nos choix et que toutes les femmes puissent euh, effectivement être libres de leurs euh, choix. Ça permet l'accessibilité facile à toute personne qui en aurait besoin et euh, ça éviterait des problèmes. Now, some people argue that the government should go even further and make contraception 100% free for all women, the government and men. The government says it wants to increase access to protection for all young people, though. That's right. And recently, the government decided to make condoms free uh, for, well, initially for 18 to 25 years, and then they decided to make it free for minors as well, because uh, it's important to remember that contraception isn't only the responsibility of women. Ouais, je pense que c'est bien de, que tout le monde ait accès à la contraception pour... Euh pour que tout le monde ait droit à une protection euh, valable et éviter euh, des accidents. Euh. Je pense qu'on en a vraiment besoin. Pour, euh, là, je sais qu'il y a une augmentation des MST, tout ça, euh, surtout cette classe d'âge. Donc euh, je trouve que ça peut vraiment être une bonne façon pour essayer de limiter ça. Ça peut permettre à, à des jeunes qui n'ont pas les moyens, ou, euh, qui ne, ne se sentent pas de venir acheter des préservatifs, de pouvoir avoir des préservatifs euh, en pharmacie, de qualité, en attention de ce qu'ils achètent, et avoir un accès plus facile. Ouais. So let's focus now on the situation on abortion in France, following the overturning of Roe versus Wade in the United States, and with abortion access being increasingly restricted in countries like Poland or Hungary. Abortion rights have been in the spotlight as well. What's the situation like at the moment? So abortion has been legal in France since 1975, and the so-called Loi Veil, so uh, named after Simone Veil, who was health minister at the time and really uh, spearheaded the law. You can see her here giving a, a historic speech arguing that uh, abortion should be legal in France. So when we talk about abortion in France, we often talk about EVG, it's our acronym du jour. So this is interruption volontaire de grossesse, so voluntary interruption of pregnancy. It's estimated that one in three women will have an abortion in their lifetime. And if we look at the figures uh, from recently in 2021, 223,000 women had abortions in France. So it's it's a really important deal here in France. Mm. And two methods of abortion are legal in France, and both are reimbursed by France's public health system. That's right. First of all, you've got abortion by medication. So uh, this doesn't require surgery. Basically, pills are prescribed by a doctor or a midwife, and a woman is allowed to take them up into seven weeks into her pregnancy. About 70% of abortions are done this way. You also have abortion by vaccine vacuum aspiration, suction abortion, uh, we can see it here, surgical uh, uh, abortion because it requires surgery and anesthesia. Now, in France, it can be performed up until 14 weeks, which is another change because up until recently, it was only legal up until 12 weeks, so that period has been extended. And while there might not be a big anti-abortion movement here in France, like in other countries, before having an abortion, women do have to have two medical appointments that are separated by a 48-hour period of reflection. And French doctors can actually refuse to perform abortions. They can. They can invo invoke something that's called a clause de conscience. Uh, it's essentially a conscious clause. Uh, but they have to immediately refer a patient to another practitioner. And it's important to note that preventing someone from getting an abortion in France is illegal. This is called a délit d'entrave, and you can see it's punishable by two years in prison, a 30,000 euro fine. So all this shows that abortion is, you know, the abortion rights are widely accepted here in France. In fact, a recent poll showed that over 80% of French people 
support the right to abortion. However, with abortion rights moving backwards in other countries like the U.S., Poland, Hungary, like we were saying before, there have been calls to enshrine abortion rights in the French Constitution. Now, critics, particularly conservatives and people on the far right, say it's not necessary because abortion rights aren't threatened in France. But defenders say that what happened in the United States, uh, what we're seeing in other European countries, these are red flags and proof that no rights, no matter how fundamental, are guaranteed. But what's interesting is changing the Constitution in France is very tricky. It's a very tricky process to oversimplify it. Basically, the procedure requires approval from both houses of parliament plus a referendum or presidential approval. So recently, lawmakers in the lower house of parliament, the Assemblée Nationale, the National Assembly, they voted to enshrine abortion rights into the Constitution, but it's facing major resistance from the Senate, which is uh, controlled by conservatives. So there's a long way to go, uh, even though a solid majority of French people actually support uh, the, the move to enshrine abortion rights into the, into the Constitution. So perhaps there will be more changes in the future. Hello, thanks so much for taking that closer look at the situation of contraception and abortion here in France. Don't forget, if you have your own questions for Florence Villeneuve about France or the French, you can always tweet her at Flo Villeneuve or reach out on social media.